Hey, Dustin here, Smoking Eagles Rock Shop, and today we're gonna be working on my Camaro doors. Now, if you're new around here, I really hope you enjoy the content. You consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and if you are already a subscriber, hey, thanks for all your support, really appreciate it. And if you guys wanna help support the channel, the best thing you can do is just like, share, subscribe. Let's be honest, you probably got more friends than I do. Hey, who knows, maybe you got 80 million followers on TikTok or Instagram or something, I don't know. Share the content. And uh, yeah, let's get on this project. So here's the door I've done the least to. It's still barely in its original state. I gotta rip all this off of here, obviously. That's all trash, I've got new of that. Now, somebody years ago hacked this whole inner door out and put speakers in here. And I made these little panels to hold actual speakers that Fit. I don't know what speakers they even had in here, but when I pull these off, you'll see it's just all hacked up. So we're gonna actually weld these on. I didn't have a welder when I made these before. I have a welder now, so we'll clean this up, make this look a lot nicer. And then um, when I put my door panels back on, I can just put speakers in because, hey, Camaro without speakers, they suck. I mean, from the factory, they got one tiny speaker in the front on the dash, and they got two six benigns in the back, and. When you uh, start going with aftermarket exhaust or no exhaust like I like to do, you really can't hear the radio anyway, so more speakers is better. If I ever buy new door panels for the car, which I actually plan on doing, um, if I don't want speakers, you just don't put speakers in. Don't cut holes in your door panel. Nobody will ever know that's even there. The armrest holes got all screwed up on this, on actually on both doors, and so years ago I fixed them and got them better. Um, Probably actually still needs a little bit of work, but um, we'll determine that when I start putting this thing, bolting this thing back together. If I need to do a little work to it, I can. No big deal there. Um, so basically just need to strip this door down the rest of the way and start sanding this and getting the inner door ready for primer, which is usually, it, it's pretty easy, honestly. There isn't a whole lot here. There's a little bit of rust. Starting to get a little crusty down here, but nothing that I think needs patched. If something needs patched, we will patch it. We're not gonna half-ass it, we're gonna do it right. Need to pull this plug out of here, clean all this up. Again, there's a little surface rust here. This door wasn't very bad. This door was horrible. I reskinned this door. And again, speaker hole. Um, I had to fix all this. Um, you probably saw in the first Camaro video, I had a couple of pictures of that. This was all rotted out in here and I made some metal, put it all in there, welded it all in. And yeah, I've got this all seam sealed all the way around here. And I painted in here, of course it's just full of dirt now. But um, <laughs> uh, this is all pretty much ready again to just get ready for primer. And it has these pins on the factory door skin here. And that was supposed to hold the chrome strip that goes down across the top of the door. It actually on the car here would go on the little section of fender that runs across here and then the back of the hood. Now I've kind of kicked it around for years whether I was gonna keep some of the Berlinetta chrome and, and fancy stuff or not. The Camaros basically delete all the chrome, even the, the trim around the windows. Uh, front and rear is black on a Camaro. The um, headlight bezels, the grill, all that stuff's all blacked out on the Camaros and I really like the blacked out look. So I'm probably just gonna black all that out. I'm gonna cut these pins off of here and just eliminate all that chrome. There's, I believe there's three different kinds of rubber window seal. And depending on what you're doing, depends on which rubber seal you have to have. So if you have a Berlinetta, it has the chrome on the top edge of here, and then you get a rubber seal that doesn't have any chrome. And there, it's actually like two pieces, right? The chrome and the rubber seal kind of use each other to seal up against your window. And then if you don't have a Berlinetta, but you don't have a Z28, I believe that's how that worked, you had a piece of rubber trim that went across there with just a little tiny strip of chrome on the inside edge so you could just barely see it over the top edge of the door. And that's, you know, that's one piece. It's not, the chrome piece isn't separate from the rubber. And then I believe the Z28s had just the rubber piece, just like the Berlinettas did. They just didn't have any chrome at all. I could be wrong. If I am, correct me in the comments below. I haven't done a whole lot of research on that for many years. I'm just trying to go off of memory here, but we'll figure that all out. Uh, again, I reskinned that door years ago. 
and it obviously doesn't have pins. I have the pins, so if I wanted to put the chrome on that door, I could just mark it and drill it and put the pins in. I have the pins that screw in, and um, yeah. So I'm gonna start tearing this door down and get it to the same state this door is in as far as being ready for sanding and stuff, and then we'll just start cleaning this stuff up. So this door is actually not too bad. I already skinned it and everything else, so it just kind of needs prepped for primer. Um, there is a little bit of rust, you can see, trying to come through, just some surface rust or whatever. The big issue I have right now is this door over here. Now, I did get this speaker done, blah, blah, blah. Um, this here, you can see, I knocked this down with scotch Bright wheel. I'm really not too worried about that. The big problem with these doors and the way GM did these is they put this giant threaded nut inside here and it's inside a cage so you can't get it out and it's got the threads that hold the door on to the hinge. Well that gets rusty, surface rust on it. Well of course it's not going to rot out because it's quarter inch thick plate steel. The problem is it lets moisture in between there and here and it starts rusting out this door and then the door cracks, falls out, have issues like I had with the other door that I had to fix. This one isn't that bad, but there's no way to really prevent that. I really wish I could get these plates out of here without going in here and like really hacking at the door. But get anyway, um, I got that knocked down pretty far. I've got some rust stuff you spray on, it goes away. I don't remember what brand it is, but we'll spray that on there. I've got this rust all along the bottom edge of here. You can see there's a little bit here and some right here. I'm not too worried about that stuff. I can get all that out. Um, I could probably get this out right here. This is just kind of in this lip of the door skin. Uh, what sucks is this down here. Now you see this Bondo here, or body filler, is green. Well, from the factory, the seam sealer is this, I don't know, white, cream, yellowish color. So that tells me that somebody else has put this in here to hide this or attempt to fix this rust that's right here. So this is not... Uh, this is a reoccurring issue is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the last guy that painted this just hid this, basically, instead of fixing it correctly. So what I need to do, there's a little bit right up in here. I think this will be okay. I think I can get all this rust out of here and then fix that with my rust stuff. I'm going to have to grind all this out and see what really needs done to fix this correctly so it doesn't come back in like a year and a half. So the good, the bad, and the ugly, I got this door. It had that new door skin on it. I got all that surface rust cleaned up and this is basically ready for our primer sealer. So that's good. I also took the old death wheel and went around anywhere where we had rust on this door and like we had talked about, I knocked all that old Bondo out of here and you can see this is super pitted. So unfortunately we're gonna have to make a patch for that, but I kind of thought that was what was gonna happen as soon as I saw the sign of prior body work. So I'm gonna figure out what tools it takes to pry this lip up. Plan is to pry this lip up at about a 45, cut out all that bad metal, make a patch, stop the rust and continue on. So I'll get working on that. 
All right, guys, so I want to show you what I got going on here. As you can see, I've just been working real carefully and just bringing this inner lip right up off of there and that little spot weld there because this is inner door is so rusted it just popped right off. I was just real careful with it, bumped it right off of there. I thought I might have to just get the little Dremel with a little grinding disc or uh, my small grinder here and just kind of nibble it right off of there, work it off of there real easy, but I didn't even have to do that. And now I'm just walking right down along here and I keep blowing the rust out. You can see there's all kinds of rust down in there. And I'm just gonna keep working this down until this inner door starts to look better. And work it down a little bit, come back and work it open, come back, work it open. We just need it open about this far, all the way up till the rust goes away. And that'll tell us where our patch needs to stop for the inner door. And then we'll make a game plan from there. But I just wanted to show you guys, take your time, be careful. I don't want to mess up the backside of this door because obviously that's the outer door skin and we don't want to get down into that. So when I'm taking my chisel or my flat screwdriver and I'm kind of tapping it right down in here and kind of working this lip open, I'm putting my hand under here and I'm really checking to make sure that I'm not like taking a corner of the screwdriver and punching a hole in the outside, outer door. Because that's just more body work that uh, we don't want to have to do. And these doors are, they got a lot of real estate. There's going to be a lot of blocking going on. So I got the lip on the outer door skin folded up out of the way and I went down through here with the wire wheel and got this cleaned up as best I could. And as you can see, the body line on the outer door skin here, there's already a little slit to fold it over so I didn't have to cut this or anything. I just folded it up and the rust goes right up in here and pretty much goes away. So I think we're good there. We'll just cut make our little patch come right down around this radius. And I decided to stop at this seam here on the inner door. That'll make our patch nice and easy to do. And the rust basically stops there. I mean, there's a little bit down along the bottom of this door we talked about before, but, and it's an Indiana car. You're gonna chase this thing. You might, if, you might as well just reskin the whole door if you're gonna get real crazy. Um, yeah, we're, I think we're good to go there. And then we'll just fold this back over our new patch and put a couple tacks in it, be off to the races. So, dinner awaits me, so I'm gonna go eat, and we will tackle this first thing tomorrow. All right guys, so, made a lot of progress yesterday. Gonna jump right in, start cutting this out. As you saw, cut that out of there. You see right down in here, it's actually in really good shape. A little bit of surface rust down in there. It's a good thing we did this, because if not, this would have just creeped through the panel or out the backside and just made us mad later. But you can see it's all pretty much surface rust in here. So I'm gonna take a wire wheel. I'm gonna clean that all up the best I can. There is some Z-Bart in here too. So that's good. We'll make a patch. I'll treat this for rust, figure out what I'm gonna do, and then uh, move on from there. Cut our template and I uh, was working on our little thingy here to make our sheet metal and it didn't quite work. As usual, you know, trial and error, 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 CAD design. Found a thicker piece of sheet metal that I liked a lot better because that stuff wasn't even gonna do nothing for us. And trimmed it with my CAD cardboard aided design and got it all in here and I really like the way this looks now. I even put a couple of little slight bends in this to line up with the body line on the front of the door and I'm gonna hold it all in like this. We'll tack it in when it's time, but it is not time yet. The first thing we need to do is finish cleaning up the bottom side of this really good and I'm gonna squirt some rust inhibitor type stuff in there and then once that dries we clean that up I will paint it with some, whatever it's called, rust encapsulator on the inside of here. And hopefully that'll stop that rust so it don't come back 
and then we can tack this in after that dries, probably tomorrow. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, we're gonna do that. So I'll rip this off of here and uh, clean this all up, and then uh, I'll meet you guys back here in hopefully five minutes, actually, this time, instead of an hour. <laughs> but anyway, the journey continues. All right, guys, so just as I promised, 15 minutes later, I'm uh, doing the rust stuff. Let me show you what we got here. Now I actually have rust dissolver from Eastwood, fast etch from Eastwood, and 415 metal prep over the years I've amassed these. Um, I honestly think that the 415 metal prep and the fast etch are the exact same product. The instructions, chemicals, everything seem to be the exact same other than the fast etch wants you to um, rinse the stuff off with water and a light detergent and pour 15 prep just says to rinse it with water and dry it completely the rust dissolver also says just to wipe it dry with water and but it's more for like soaking parts in you can also soak parts in the other two um, and all three of these are reusable so if you put it in a container use it and then pull your parts out um, you can just pour the stuff back in the bottle and reuse it. I've reused this multiple times. I actually like to use this with my ultrasonic cleaner. That's a story for another day. I can teach you guys how to do that sometime, but it works amazing. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, anyway, um, so we're using a fast etch. Basically, it wants me to spray it on and then keep the surface wet for 30 minutes-ish until I get like a dark black or a dark gray um, color where all the rust was, and then we know it's good, wipe it off with the stuff, and then they want me to use a primer, but I'm gonna use Rust Encapsulator, which says that it can be top coated and used kinda as a primer, so that's what we're gonna do. But um, yeah, I just got this chip brush, I spray it on there, and then as you can see, the surface is nice and wet, and then I just go along and every so often I make sure I spread it back out anywhere where it's tried to kind of run dry or move around on me and just keep that rust nice and covered up and I went around anywhere like all these holes here that's where our rubber weather stripping goes so nobody's ever going to see any of that guys and I want to get that rust out of there so I'm doing this and then we'll use that rust encapsulator we'll paint all this black down in here, this will all get painted black. And then later on, uh, we'll prime all this and that'll all be buried under primer. And then we'll shoot the color on and it'll all be blue and match. Nobody will ever know. And if it's not 100% perfect, it'll be okay. Because we won't have rust. And that's the main thing is get rid of that there. So here rust. is what we've got now. Clean that all up. Use the old window cleaner, like I said. Wiped it all off real good. And that is the coating, that phosphorus coating that it kind of leaves on everything. Now there are a few spots that were real heavily pitted with rust that still look like there's a little bit of rust down inside there. But lucky for us, the black paint that I'm gonna be using is Rust Encapsulator. And it's supposed to stop rust and you're supposed to be able to paint it right over top of surface rust and, and stuff and it's supposed to really stop it like a pre-paint on like your frame or whatever. I also did around the edge of this door and that phosphorus coating should protect that for a few days. So then I've got, you know, two, three days before I have to get primer on sealer on this. That'll give me enough time to finish that door up. We've got the rust encapsulator here and it says I can apply it directly over surface rust, top coat, um, with any paint, prevents rust from spreading, penetrates deep, and cures fast. So I'm hoping this will take care of whatever that missed, and then we'll be good to go, and we can top coat it with our primer sealer, and then, yeah. So I'm going to toss some gloves on, I'm going to get this paint on, and then first thing tomorrow, we'll get on this patch. So see you in the morning. All right, it's the next day. Let's get back at it. So as you can see, the paint dried, got the paint on there. There's a couple of runs here and there, but it doesn't really matter because again, we're gonna scuff all this up real good and then shoot epoxy sealer over top of this and then high build primer on top of that. So none of that really matters. We just wanted to stop all this rust. You can see all down in here, 
I got it coated really good all the way along that bottom lip. And then over here, underneath where our patch is. Now I know when I tack weld this all along here, our patch, it is gonna burn some of that paint off of there, but a majority of that will all be sealed. And we can live with that. And then we'll put another coat of paint right over the top edge of that. I'll get everything else ready to primer and then we'll be off to the races. But let me uh, get our patch in here and get that welded on and then yeah, I'll be back. So, got that all ground down, welded on there, got her all feathered down real nice. So, basically, we'll just take a little bead of body filler right down through there, and then we'll sand a little radius. That'll just fill in the little weld spots right along there. And, yeah. So, now we just need to fold this lip back over this edge, just like it was from the factory. Now, to do that, I'm going to use this door hammer. I actually got this. This is Maddox brand. I got it at Harbor Freight. These are actually really good body hammers. Now you can get a really cheap set, usually at like swap meets um, and stuff like that. And they're like 15 or 20 bucks for like a set of hammers. And they're really cheap. I actually had a set of those first and I ended up breaking them working on the blue truck. They're really cheap. I saw these Maddox at Harbor Freight and the quality on these is really, really nice for the price point. I forget what I paid for them, but it, it really was not that bad. 30, 40 bucks for a set of body hammers. Now you have to buy the door skin hammer set separate. So I actually have two sets of body hammers. But anyway, um, this is for doing doors and it's got this radius on here and it's real narrow and that's for tapping these on. So I've got this clamped here. We're gonna need to clamp this up here just to kind of hang on to that. And remember, this is real thin here where it's rusted out, but it, it'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is get another clamp right here to help hold this down. And we'll just start working this lip back over and work all the way back and forth. You don't just bend it over here or you screw up the surface, the back surface of the door, which we've already screwed up a little bit, but it'll be fine because, again, we got to block and, and do a bunch of body work to the other side of the door anyway. So I'm just going to support this kind of on the back side and just start tapping this over. Keep working this down. It wants to go back where it came from, so it's not fighting or anything. trying to make sure that this patch that we put in here is pulled down nice and flat. So that's going to hold that all together. Now, I'm not swinging this thing like a claw hammer either, guys, so just, you know, keep that in mind. Just nice boom, boom. It's 
slow and steady. Move the panel where you want it to go. We're good to go. So I'm going to tack this on here in a couple spots. I'll tack this on here in a couple spots. I just really wanted to show you guys kind of the process of how that works. And if we were skinning this whole door, we would start and you would have you would have four sides of this door and all the lips would be standing straight up and you would do just a little bit put just a little angle on it work your way across the edge then work down the next edge then the next edge and then the next edge on this corner a little bit on the other corner a little bit on this corner a little bit on this corner because you want this door skin and the inner door to be square with each other you don't want to just hammer one side over all at once. One, it'll ripple that whole edge of the panel on the front side and it'll look terrible, but it'll push that inner door skin or inner door away from that edge. And then when you do the other edge, now your, your door skin is on your panel and it's offset. It's not gonna line up right. So you wanna work your way all the way around. Of course, I don't have a full panel to show you guys, but uh, yeah. I'll get this tacked on here and we will keep on trucking. And here we are. Got her all tack welded on there. Ground all the slag and crap off of there and got it all cleaned up nice. And just like the rest of that stuff, oh, and any of the paint that got hot and kind of crispy around here, I just kind of knocked off of there and then I hit it with a piece of sandpaper and I'm gonna toss a little bit of rust encapsulator on this bottom corner so it matches everything else, get it around there real good. We'll let it dry overnight. Now, I'm really not too worried about what these welds and stuff look like down in here. I just tried to make sure that everything was nice and smooth, as smooth as I could get it, because again, I'm gonna put seam sealer around this edge and down through here so it looks factory, and also to help keep water out of there and moisture so that it doesn't rust. So hopefully this will kind of creep down in any cracks or Pin holes in that rust, in that, not the rust, we removed all the rust in those welds and kind of seal everything up from the backside or protect it from the backside. That's the game plan. Whether it works or not, my kids will find out because they'll end up with this car 40, 50 years from now when the rust comes back. They'll say, man, my dad did a crappy job. If only he knew what he was doing. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Anyway, uh, catch you tomorrow. I'll uh, get this all buttoned up and we'll go from there. So as you can see, I got the seam sealer on here. That paint dried, I got it all prepped up. I had this used tube of AC Delco and uh, it was still good. So I used that. It's probably the same stuff I used on that other door. Used the acid brush. This whole pack was like three bucks at Harbor Freight. Can't beat that. Now from the factory, if you don't know how this kind of worked, GM just had like a giant pneumatic caulking gun with a brush on the end of it and they would just squirt that seam sealer on the doors the everywhere right floor pans they put that stuff everywhere so i did the same thing i just used my caulking gun and i just put a bead down and then i would use my acid brush go back and just kind of paint it on so that it looked just like it did from the factory actually probably better <laughs> but uh anyway 
I've seen guys even tape the acid brush on the end of the tube on a couple of other YouTube channels and then they just kind of like squirt it on as they go, especially like on your floor pans and stuff because that's all gonna be underneath the carpet, who cares, right? So these doors are now ready for primer, minus, you know, prepping for the primer and all that stuff. So that's gonna be in the next video when we prime these doors and bury them in high build so I can start my block party. That's what I'm gonna call it, a block party. So I hope you enjoyed prepping these doors. Let me know it in the comments below. Did I forget to do anything? Did I screw anything up? Is there a better way to do this? I don't know, I'm just like you guys, you know, DIY and uh, yeah, I'll post some other crap that we do around my melon there. If any of that piques your interest, make sure you go check that out. Like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends. And until next time, keep on wrenching. Peace.